With a population approaching 8 billion people, Earth is pretty crowded, but there would be a lot more people if we didn't have contraception. I'm Emma, and today we're learning about the different methods of contraception. Methods of contraception can be split into hormonal and non-hormonal. We'll start with the hormonal methods, and as you need to be able to evaluate the different types of contraception, we'll look at advantages and disadvantages of each. First up, we've got the oral contraceptive pill. This is taken every day and contains hormones that will stop the egg from maturing. Do you remember which hormone normally makes the eggs mature? Yeah, it's FSH. So the pill inhibits FSH, which just means it stops the production of FSH. The big advantage of the pill is that it's easy to use and if it's used properly, it's highly effective. The disadvantage is it can be really easy to forget to take it. Or if you vomit, you can lose your pill for the day. And it has some side effects like increased blood pressure and other things. Next methods are the patch, the injection, and the implant. All of these use the hormone progesterone. This inhibits eggs in the ovary from maturing or from getting released. And they last progressively longer. So this is a big advantage of these methods. However, they all need replacing and the injection and the implant require a nurse or a doctor to receive. Now we're going to look at the non-hormonal methods of contraception. First up, we've got spermicides. This is a chemical method that can kill or stop sperm from actually working. The benefit of these are that they're readily available. You can buy them from any pharmacy. But the disadvantage is they're not very effective and shouldn't be used on their own. Next up are barrier methods, such as condoms for males and diaphragms for females. The good thing about these is that there are no side effects and they can prevent against some STDs. The disadvantage is they need to be fitted correctly and if they get damaged they can easily let sperm through, increasing your risk of pregnancy. Here we've got an IUD or an intrauterine device. This is inserted into the uterus, just like you can see over here. It works by preventing early embryos from implanting into the uterus lining. Some of them will also contain progesterone. The big advantage is, is that it's very effective, and once inserted, it's obviously very long-lasting. However, in the early days, it can be uncomfortable and cause some period pains. Next up, we've got surgical methods. This is for males in the sperm duct and in females, the ovary. These can be either cut or tied. The big advantage is that it's permanent. This is for people who know they don't want to conceive. The disadvantage is that for women, this procedure requires a general anesthetic, which carries a risk with it. The final method is abstinence. This is making sure that you don't have sexual intercourse when the egg is in the oviduct. The advantage to this is that it's got no side effects whatsoever, but the disadvantage is a big one. It's really risky and you have a high risk of getting pregnant with this method. We're going to try some questions now, so pause the video, try and answer them, and press play when you're done. 1. Define contraception. This is the prevention of the sperm meeting the egg, or preventing an early embryo from implanting into the uterus lining. The contraceptive pill uses hormones to inhibit the maturation of eggs. Which hormone causes the maturation of eggs in the ovary? FSH. 3. Name two types of barrier contraception. Condoms and diaphragms. 4. Compare the IUD to spermicides. IUDs are much more effective at preventing pregnancies than spermicides. An IUD removes human error as it is placed inside the uterus so it cannot be forgotten, whereas spermicides need to be used every time sexual intercourse happens. Finally, spermicides are easier to obtain, whereas IUDs need a doctor's appointment. How did you do? If you're studying higher tier, next up is how to treat infertility. But if you're studying foundation, well done! You've finished the homeostasis topic. If you're finding these videos useful, please click here to subscribe. Thanks and bye!